experts from outside the country to bring perspective on this issue wherever you are just lock down your dials and join 99.7 fm throughout the next six weeks as we try and pull from different angles what will this do for you will give you clarity about what you really need to start a business and then if you are doing it already you can re-examine the foundations of what you are doing and ask yourself can this be done better than it is being done uh, done today Jifab makes the point that uh, the money is great but really what you need is a great um, a great i mean um abbas is a good idea jifa sees the person the person put the cash in the wrong hands uh, yeah, and it enough. it it will it will be a problem let me come to jifa jifa's business i know jifa's business very well so i'll ask a question that i know she can't like <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me talk about a research that we stumbled on jifa that says about 30 percent of entrepreneurs actually admit that running out of cash is a reason for failure the business model is good the person's mindset is good but you need money cash hmm. and you run out at a point i mean have you experienced cash flow problems before and if you did what advice would you give to millicent as she she starts on <laughs> the journey does. about yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to them oh i think what i realized was that i did a degree in marketing and I had a first class. So I thought I was very intelligent. I've come to realize that there are different types of intelligences. Having a first class in the university, I realized that I was an illiterate financially. That was one of my biggest problems I, I realized. I could rattle, I could talk, but when it comes to fin finance and the numbers, I was an illiterate. So I had to go back to go and school myself to be financially literate, to understand my business and how it works. One thing I realize is happening in the current generation is that most of the young entrepreneurs are too much in a hurry. So they don't acquire the necessary skill. You cannot run a successful business without financial knowledge. Now I realize that most people don't understand the cash flow management, which is why after some few years they run into serious problems. But what, 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 what should they know that they don't know? Now, when I'm talking about the cash flow management, all I'm talking about is that the goods that you bought, you buy, you stock, you sell, people pay, and you have to pay suppliers. How long do you stock your products? It looks like it's basic thing, but people don't really document it to see. If you get a, a new enterprise and ask him, these things you are selling, how long have they been in the warehouse? They can't even tell you. When you sell, how long do you go after your money? Once they've sold, they think that is the end. Selling is not the same as getting the money. Meanwhile, they have a commitment to their suppliers. So when so much goods are stocked up in their warehouse, they are not able to sell. When they've sold to people are not paying them, suppliers are putting demand on their heads. They run for overdrafts. They run for loans, which are very expensive. That is the beginning of disaster. So have you have you had your, your fingers bent? Oh like yes, that? not once, not twice, several. That's why I have to learn the hard way by going back to come and learn how to manage my. Because I got to a point I thought in fact, I was I didn't have any money. I had stock and people were owing me so much. When I went to CIB, the professor sat me and said, Jifa, your problem is not about going for an overdraft or for a loan. Sit down and go and collect your money. I said, ah, why should I? He said, no, 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 no. The amount of money you have in there, when you go for them, you can build your business a thousand times more. So I realized that, especially when a young entrepreneur have access to quick funds from their bank and overdraft, that is their first point of call. Once you do that, they, need, they don't think about the impact and the increase in their cost of operations. So for me, every young entrepreneur should be somebody who learns how to document. Understand that, for example, in my business, if there's a promotion, how is their business is going to buy 20 television and come and keep them down when I have no demand for them? So long as you have bought them, you have an obligation to your supplier. And so those that you have bought, you are going to focus on collecting the money. You are thinking of pushing in the money. Some look at their sales figures and they are excited. But most of those people, the money is in somebody else's pocket. So now, going to the young entrepreneur. <laughs> Abba, yeah. so have you had any issues? You know, you described going to pick up goods on behalf of consumers and then going to, you know, deliver the goods. Have you ever had issues where you've gone to deliver the goods that you paid for with your money and not received cash on delivery? I mean, for me, I don't call them challenges now. I call them experience because you learn, you learn from them. There was one that uh, when I started, 
I wanted to do like outside sub, outside delivery as well. So yeah, someone you mean outside of Ghana. Outside, of outside Ghana. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, so someone contacted me that they wanted food stuff. They sent me their list. I was so in a hurry because this was like it was a big thing for me to do. I went to buy the stuff packaged and ready to deliver and the cost for the airfare was more than what the person ordered for. So I'll call it experience. So then the next time, if I have any order like that, I make sure I get all these details before I do that because that was that was money there. <laughs> Forgive me for laughing. I know. <laughs> Forgive me for laughing because <laughs> <laughs> it's twenty-one minutes past the hour. So in my in my in my case, I, I think you are yeah, a bit lucky, a, a bit luckier than me because mine was to Bahamas and I was doing wall hangings. Then I was so excited and I said, Charlie, guess what? I actually calculated how much money I was going to make, and I felt so happy. I told everyone, this is the last day of my po- my I poverty. <laughs> I can relate. My, the last day of my poverty, and I actually shipped the goods to Bahamas, and to make it worse. This was supposed to be for a conference that was dated, so I had to send it by express. So the cost of freighting the goods was even more than the cost of the goods. I hadn't met the buyer before, but the person making the link had met the buyer and said, no problem. Listen, Mm. take my word. It's a deal. Only for the things we shipped to Bahamas. We had even calculated how much money, how much of the profit I would take, how much my partner would take. It was very nice. (laughs) (laughs) On paper, I guess. Not a CD key. And, 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 and the, more, the more painful part of it was that we kept, we kept having hope until one day we called the guy and he said, oh, it rained in Bahamas. When he started talking about the rain, no, we knew that he said flooded and he said the whole thing. <laughs> 22 minutes past the hour of 7. If your house is not flooded, please, let's continue this discussion. <laughs> but if you've been joining us, if you join us from the beginning, we're having a discussion with 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 Abba Tete and, and Jifa Anyaso, two entrepreneurs on different sides of the spectrum. Abba has been at it for, for not for that long, but Jifa has been at it for 13 years. And we are comparing notes between the two. As we break down the subject of money, what we are trying to find out, how big an issue is money? Is it overrated? Is it is it real? When when people say, oh, you don't need money to start a business, sometimes people say, you see, you, you talk theory, but when you get down on the reality, how do you pay the rent? How do you pay the, this? So, so, so let's find out how, 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 how does it happen? Juju, you want to touch on an issue? Um, so, no, just, just looking at the recent um, issue we had in the financial sector where certain banks were not able to meet the minimum capital requirement. Um, and these are financial institutions, so, you know, they are supposed to be good with money. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. But the question then becomes, you know, as you're growing your business, mm-hmm. is it worth it? to give up some equity in your business in exchange for capital to keep it going or to expand it. Um, what would you say to that, Jifa? Yeah, I think as a startup, my best advice for you is to give up part of it for e- as equity to get some money into the business. Reason being that it's not very advisable to start your business on debt. First, because you are now testing the model on the market. You'd be surprised you come out with a brilliant idea. You don't know what somebody else is thinking. So if you go in for that and you launch, then finally another person launch it bigger than you. What are you going to do? So for me, when you get the option of getting equity, I go in for it. But my little advice is that most of us at this part of the world ignore certain basic things. If you're going to go into equity, the business model and the idea must be costed, valued, and put into the documentation as your part of the equity. It's very critical. So you're saying that in most partnership arrangements, the valuations are not done right, the foundations are not strong. Have have you considered partnership, um, Abba? Oh, yes, yes, we have. I mean, for me, it's a good way to expand your business, if you ask me. Uh, Who wouldn't want to see Fusta from Branch in Tema, Fusta from Branch in Kumase? So once you get, like she said, you get the right, um, you need to get the right people to do that particular transaction for you for instance you need an accountant you need a lawyer to prepare a co- contract with regards to that and then you strike a deal once you do that because see the responsibilities and get having to manage so many things you cannot do that alone let me revisit our our, our foundational <laughs> our foundational thoughts that we started this journey with if you just joined us we are riding on two streams the first is the six m's created by by dr jacob Madu. the second is 
a brilliant paper submitted by our own Amos. Amos is the 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 head of our uh, data is keen our research seg segment. Amos never comes on air, but today I'm going to pull him right on air because the article is written in the 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 um, um, Safari Safari is 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 just brilliant. I mean, I was telling Juju that the definiteness of his recommendation is something that I admire. A person who makes a clear recommendation. Listen, the solution is business unusual. Each graduate must employ five people minimum and then we just get it done by the way how many people do you employ yeah six okay six you've employed five you've done, you've contributed a quota. You are, you, you, it's left with you you should, you should contribute this quota. it was coming to the studio today let's let's hear from you i mean you, but we have people who advise us on it for now yeah but it's, it's nice that you have done your show you've, you've, you've contributed five people to the employee you've done okay. well and and just by the way when we come to the data skill segment which amos is going to do next we will be asking you to answer the question if we are saying that uh, there are ten, uh, there are twelve million youth entering the labor, the job market in Africa every year, how many jobs are the twelve million competing for? Your guess is as good as mine. Is it ten million, eight million, five million, three million, or one million? The right answer, the first person with the right answer will get a copy of the book a Thousand and One Tips for an Outstanding Life, which we are serializing on Facebook right now. But Matthew, do you know the answer? You don't know. You just wrote an exam. Your head is still hot. <laughs> it was. Tell me. I mean, brilliant article. What was the inspiration for it? I know you. For those who don't know you, you also wear another hat um, as a manager um, in international um, at KPMG. What was your department? International what? International Development Advisory Services. Right. So that's a big post. So that article. So it means that everyone who bought Kenya Airways most likely gets to read your your article. Yes, so this one was done in 2017. Right. I'll, uh, ask, for, I'll ask for a back copy so I get that edition. Okay. So they do it on a monthly basis. Right. So every month they, there is a copy. Um, and so for that month, everyone who boarded Kenya Airways would have read that article. What, what was the inspiration and what was the thesis? What, what was the whole idea behind that article? For me, I am passionate about development. So I am a development economist. And I started off my career in development in Nigeria with the National Planning Commission. Currently, it's called the Ministry of Planning and Budget. Right. Um, so that has been my passion. How do we develop the economies of Africa? Right. Um, and then from National Planning Commission, I came to work at the Central Bank of Ghana. And then now with KPMG for about five years now in international development. Last week, your segment on... Yeah, last week, a segment on... Um on on gender parity was brilliant i mean i mean looking at how many years it will take us to get men and women to get equal economic opportunity i mean and it was 202 years if we continue at this rate i mean Abba, can you imagine <laughs> before we can safely say that across the world women have equal opportunity as men in the economic space um, i mean generally we're looking at 106 years or so but for economic in particular we're looking at 202 years and that is the reason why we make a conscious effort on this platform to create the opportunity for women to share their success stories and that's why we have two on the show now and no men no men <laughs> <laughs> so 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 the for the data is gained segment today we are writing on the same same thoughts and pulling from the the preamble so for what you shared you said um half i mean you, your, your your foundation was that africa's unemployment is quite significant and we have 12 million youth entering the job market every year and that's from an adb research so how many jobs are they competing for for the benefits is 730 now how many are they, uh, how many jobs are they competing for they are competing for a quarter Three million, Three jobs. million jobs. All right. If you wrote, if you wrote four, you almost. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do you have somebody who's, who's gotten it so far? All right. Nobody yet. Okay. So you're not doing your research enough. So today we get to keep our book. But next week when we announce the data skin segment, we will announce another question. When you get the right answer, you get to win a book, and we'll increase the price exponentially as we go along, just to encourage the culture of research for fun. But it must. What does it say? One out of every four. That means three out of every four youth that enter the market don't have anything to do. That is correct. So, and that's why the article we read in the beginning is also mm -hmm. saying, you know, a lot of the youth in Africa, they are discouraged. 
Now, you described it very, very interestingly. You talked about is it 240 million youth, and you said unemployed and discouraged. So 430. 430. 430 yes. million youth. You described them as unemployed and discouraged. And discouraged. And you said According it's... According to the African Development Bank. And it's like <laughs> cooking. <laughs> well, you explain the cooking analogy for me. <laughs> How can you des- describe unemployment like cooking? So, cocaine, as we said, in the hands of the expert, it has medicinal capabilities. It right. has beneficial um, abilities used in drug production. So you get sick and you use it and you get healed. But the same cocaine, if it falls in the wrong hands, in the hands of the drug addict, it's actually a harmful substance and it destroys the body. So that's how we are seeing the unemployment situation. If we have countries that are thinking entrepreneurially, even the leaders that are thinking, how do we make entrepreneurs succeed and create jobs in that way the unemployment situation becomes a benefit that we can leverage to create employment and develop our economies but if we don't look at it then that same situation rather becomes harmful and as it happened with the arab spring exactly when we come back from this break i'm going to tell you what a south african friend of mine said about the same problem in ghana and the same problem in South Africa and how our responses are different. But you bring us the message from Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. And then when we come back from this break, we will talk about how can we make Imos's radical suggestion possible. He wants each graduate to create five jobs. Actually, they should call it to the presidency. I'm telling you, this matter <laughs> is serious. Each grad, one, uh, we should create, if you have one, this is one factory. And we have one, one, <laughs> as they see, one million. We must create one, one graduate, graduate, five jobs. Five jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take it away from EcoBank. Mm-hmm. All right, so EcoBank Ghana is the only bank to have won the coveted CIMG Bank of the Year Award five times, winning the last three consecutively for 2014, 2015, and 2016. Now, this year, the bank has been elevated to the prestigious Marketing Hall of Fame, which is another first by a bank in Ghana. Alongside this award, the bank has also won the much sought after CIMG marketing oriented company in Ghana. Ecobank also wins the 2018 Mobex Africa Innovation Award for Banking Solution of the Year and Fintech Innovation Bank of the Year. We could not have achieved all this without you, our valued and cherished customers. And we take this opportunity to thank you and to renew our promise to you to continuously work at improving service delivery and providing innovative and flexible financial products and services to suit your everyday banking needs. Now, we encourage everyone to join Ecobank, the winning bank, today. Simply download the Ecobank mobile app on Google Play Store or the App Store and get connected or visit any of our branches or express points nationwide and transact with ease. Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. And Springboard is the virtual university. So Jeremiah Bobbing says, my philosophy is simple. If you're in Ghana, forget debt, forget equity, focus on sales. Debt is not for you. It belongs to the bank. They will come for it. Equity is not for you. It belongs to the investor. He will come for it. Focus on sales. That money is yours. What a customer pays for you, pays you is for the business. Pour your energy and effort into getting customers and your business is on its way to success. That is Jeremiah's prescri- prescription as he watches us on Facebook. What is your prescription? Um, <clears throat> he says, forget about equity, forget about debts. We will, uh, we will explore that a bit more when we open the phone lines. What is your own perspective? Is it equity? Is it debt? Is it sales? We will explore that. But let's go for a, a quick message from MTN and from Echo Bang. When I come back, I will play you the song era de featuring Calvis Hammond and coda please don't go away and i'll give you my own special invitation to to uh, i almost said springboard <laughs> whenever i see a crowd i see springboard when i, when I see a bigger bigger crowd that is greater works i'm going to give you my own my own invitation to the yellow edition of greater works starting tomorrow at the independence square please don't go away Charlie, where are you? Boss man, I'm at the bank. Really? But your car is in front of your house. Bro, my bank on my phone, Charlie. Oh, how? Ecobank, bro. With Ecobank mobile app, I can do everything, anywhere, anytime. Listen, I just checked my account balance, paid Amen school fees, and sent money to my grandma at Wale Wale. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Masa, just download the Ecobank mobile app from the Google Play Store or the App Store or dial star 770 hash and be your own bank manager. Manager, manager. Whether to pay bills or fees. 
to check account statements, send money across Ghana, abroad and more. Ecobank Mobile app has got it covered. Ecobank Mobile, making everyday people live everyday lives the Ecobank way. Ecobank, the Pan-African bank. Come I had the I had the I had the Sammy Gusu Mumu. If you say empty and extra much at the two table, brand new Samsung 65 inch UHD smart TV, and a brand new 2019 Hyundai, and a few 3000 Ghana. You should go say mono. Ah, empty and Mumu. Still, Miss Aka, the journey of a thousand smiles. Yes, I see 10 years ago. And to celebrate this milestone, empty and a give you away exciting prizes in the empty and Mumu attend promo. Yeah, you knew some Mumu. You could win one of the nine. 2019 Hyundai i10 cars. Yes, I'm a Samsung smart TVs for baby. And they have to 3,000 CDs e cash every month. And a grand prize, you know. 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. In the empty and Mumu i10 promo. It is signing on and they keep using your empty and Mumu. Now, when you big, if it's happy, you have to see August every year. Only on Ghana's best network. Daily Star 120 hash. A check your points. Terms and conditions apply. Just Mumu 8. We there for you. Everywhere you go. When the Lord lifts up his hand, things happen. And that's a song you're writing by Calvis Hammond featuring Koda. Good evening, Calvis. How are you? I know you are you are dancing to your own music and Koda, you will be at you will be at Greater Works tomorrow. Charlie friends, wherever you are tomorrow, day or night, mm. just start walking towards the independent square. Tell me, you 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 thank me later. It's gonna be the biggest greater works ever, and it's just absolutely amazing this morning at christ temple brendan Kampfer from from the brooklyn tabernacle choir who's here um working with the greater works mass choir um was was leading the song at church and then he just swung to a swung to a tree song and charlie yay charlie it reminded me of ron kennelly singing radio radio it was not easy tomorrow at the independence square 5 p.m to 9 p.m make a day to us as we 
set off the biggest greater works conference ever what is in it for you it's a time to just focus on god and allow, allow him to inspire you for the years ahead very importantly it's a communion service to bring to an end 40 days of power you say i didn't fast it doesn't matter actually I, I i read a parable about some people who went to work early in the morning and some people who came just last minute just when the door was closing they entered and they were paid the same thing it's very painful for those who started early but listen hey, even if you didn't fast just join us tomorrow for the last hour and, and at the independence square something from heaven will touch your life and you will not be the same it's 41 minutes past the hour the hour of of seven and the thoughts that um the thoughts that our colleague Abel shared are very poignant he says he says what it will take will be will be africa challenging young people young students to aim at employing five people each is it is it is it a wild thought is it something worth discussing i mean let's start with you i mean abba you are a young person you are seeing to it that others also earn a living is it is it, is it real is it possible it's it's very possible and for me it, being great is not just bettering yourself but impacting on the generation as well so if you have the means to employ people you're changing lives if you have the means to employ people to i mean take care of them i think it's it's a great idea but the possibility is it possible is it possible do you have the means to employ people for a startup who is like a year to employ five six people that one would be a bit difficult let's so let's say there's a lifetime target let's say that you start with one you move to two yeah uh, you start it, obviously you have to start with one even it gets to when you start it's all about you you do yeah. all the necessary <laughs> rounds it's when you think that's okay so the demand it's it's more now so you have to supply it will require you to employ someone to assist you right yes so so jifaba talks about uh, employment as if it is it's um a social intervention to create opportunity for others but really for the entrepreneur it's about the person bringing value mm-hmm. value is which is far greater than what you pay them mm-hmm. as, as, as somebody who's employed people for 13 years can you look back and say for some of the people you employ really without them it would be a it would be a disaster for you they they really and they are keep i know there will also be some who charlie have given you nightmares tell, tell us about the the, the 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 good the bad and the ugly of employing people uh, employment generally see when you have the mind of growing a business that is going to be sustainable and transcend generations i always brought down word from dr Otterbill. he preached a message on transgenerational thinking right so if you start your business today and you are thinking transgenerationally obviously you can't do it alone even if you are alone, time will be they will come you will die so definitely employing people is a must along the 13 years if i guess you have to hire slowly and fire quickly okay. but there are certain people who are very very key to where i am today for which i'm very thankful to god it get it got to a time but for those people who stood in to support my vision I only have gotten to where I was. But there were people too who embezzled so much, who just saw the opportunity that money was there, systems were not built, so let's camp, feed, and go. So it's up to the entrepreneur. That was one of the things Reverend Albert Okran taught me when he was mentoring me. He said, Jifa, you hire slowly and fire quickly. Mm. If you get that principle said, right. I didn't know it was, I didn't know it came from you. <laughs> it came from you. <laughs> and secondly, I also learned along the way that you employ people you need not the people you want right very critical you must make sure that for you to employ somebody because employment is expensive do you really need the person to do some specific things before you employ them very important zero two four four three four zero four three seven is the number if you want to send us a whatsapp but if you want to call into the studio the time is right now zero three zero two two one six five four one zero three zero two two one six five four one is it a feasible idea for for a young student to aim at employing five people if we have three fifty thousand people coming into the labor market every year in ghana if each of them employed five people the numbers will be just absolutely brilliant one thousand one point seven five million people be employed <laughs> and our unemployment will fall like that what will it take what, what should governments do what should individuals do is it is it possible is it feasible that's the subject we like to explore as we we try to find a solution um to this 
problem of unemployment we have to link that because no discussion at about entrepreneurship really is is sustainable without bringing on board or or, or is, is contextual without bringing on board the issue of unemployment and that brings the full picture into it do you what is your own thought about this i mean i mean five people per just look around you yourself your mates and so on is this something that makes sense to you um, I think it makes sense, especially because you can look at the fact that not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. So in the five people, there are actually six because there's the entrepreneur themselves. Right. And the nexus of people that then form around them. So it allows for there to be a society where there are people who know they are cut out to be entrepreneurs and who then take that risk and go out there and let those ideas become businesses. And it also leaves room for the people who say, me that entrepreneurship is not for me i want to work for somebody to also have the opportunity to join a business and add value exactly. it is 14 minutes to the hour of eight o'clock how do you want to add value to this nation we are finding out is it is it a practical thought is it is it, is it something that can be done just call into the show let's talk about your perspective on entrepreneurship can we have our young people employing five people each as it was is prescribing so boldly in this article <laughs> yeah. let's find out the number is open the phone lines are open sorry zero two zero two two one six five four one hello good evening hello good evening i'm harry um harry let's find out what, what is your perspective on the discussion we're having what is the Sorry about that. We lost Henry on the line, but we are trying to find out: Is it feasible for us to have have uh, young graduates employing five people each? If you are a parent and your child just graduated, think about them as a possible employer of five people and start addressing them with respect. If you are <laughs> young, if you are young graduates, no. if you are young graduates and you are listening, see yourself as a potential employer of five and call into the studio. Let's talk. What what will be the business you will create to employ those five people? How will you employ them? Let's talk about it. Who knows? As we talk, you just might begin to believe that it's possible and the next time you call us, you will say I did it. Harry from Labadi. Do we still have Harry? Hello. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Your name, where are you calling from, please? My name is Moha Fashion. I'm calling from Abile Kumajoma. All right, so Moha, tell us, is, is it feasible? Yeah, what is there is for the entrepreneurship, we need the government to come under the entrepreneurship to help the young shall grow. Those that have something doing in hand, government should go under those people. Those are the people that will help the nation to go forward. Because what we want is those that are doing something, if the help go on them, it will be very unique than the ones that are using their mouth without having anything doing. They are, they thank you very much. Mouth. All right, thank so you very much, Moa. So you are saying that you want to see government's, government's involvement. All right, thank you very much. But most, em- most entrepreneurs, seriously, we'll talk about the fact that they, 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 they learn to do it by themselves without relying on any on any government and along the line i mean if any help came from anywhere that was a bonus rather than the the bigger motivation for 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 them to start but did you get any any government coming to your no, assistance I didn't. have you seen the government before <laughs> <I> <laughs> what does what I does he or she look but like you, you see if you have a great business idea people will love to buy into that is one sometimes you have a great idea and you go to people you approach people can tell you the number of people or the number of companies have spoken to about this and they they see it as a startup they don't know how you would they don't know how things are going to turn let's take more point a bit further if if the government wanted to help young people what do you, in your opinion will be the best kind of help should it be in an incubator program should it be cash should I it be access to market should it be training should it be research opportunities what kind of support do you personally think um, nations governments should provide for young businesses i th- personally think that there should be training in a tertiary institution for skill sets like when, once you're in school you are learning or training yourself to become like an entrepreneur like people have fashion schools now it should be something key in every university right you do not have to coincidentally do an advertising lecture like i or advertising projects like i did 
to be able to come up with an idea like this. There should be a skill set in there for us to learn. Right. Yeah. Right, so we're going to be coming to our game changer segment in a minute, but let me just say something in response to your point about learning entrepreneurship. <laughs> I had a very funny experience that later on I'll, t- I'll tell you about it. So here was I very passionate um, about um, a program put in place, I believe, by Professor Asensu Achiri for um, for entrepreneurship training, and so I, I volunteered to lecture entrepreneurship for free. A leg on uh, it was my own matter, so I felt it was it was worth my while. I did it for probably ten weeks or so, and in my last lecture, it was it was just a wrap up lecture. I was actually showing them how to get started. And when I said my last lecture, the class was full, and I was wondering, I oh, want to know how to start a business. Mm. Yes. So I gave it my best. Then when I finished, I opened question time, expecting them to be asking about location, positioning, equity, and so on. It said exams will it be multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, so apparently they, were, they wanted to know how they could they could they, they could pass the exam. Exactly. They were more interested in that one than how to start yeah, a business. Let exactly. me bring on board a great friend of Springboard, Kofi Osinshra. is the CEO of. Oh, I lost Kofi on the line. Let's get Kofi on the line again. Kofi Osinshra is the CEO of Insano, Ghana Limited. He employs people. He has built a business with equity. He understands money. He understands um, starting a business. Let's find out his perspective on this subject of of employing people and also on the subject of money. Hello, Kofi. All right, so I missed Kofi on the line. I'll go for the Data Skin segment. When I come back, I'll bring Kofi also on the line. Game changer segment to Jojo Khan. When I finish and I come back, I'm going to put Kofi also in Shira on the line to wrap up for us. We've been trying to examine the subject of entrepreneurship and very importantly the money side of things what we want to do is to just help our listeners to understand the six m's of money that we set out with last week and those were put out by dr jekumado who joined us for that first um, inaugural discussion so we're looking at money we're looking at materials manpower marketing machines and minutes or time as assets for the business person As we go along on this journey, you will find very, very interesting perspectives. And Jojo is taking up the challenge of of managing the six part series. And he's he hung out with Dr. Jikumado this week and 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 it was quite an interesting uh, from the feedback again, it was quite an interesting discussion from for, from the perspective of a young person looking for solutions and an experienced person who's seen it all and say, you know what, <laughs> look here, avoid the red door. Juju, yeah. before you go to your segment, tell me how how was the interaction with Dr. Jikmadu? Phenomenal. The, the man has so much wisdom to offer, and I mean he's seen and done it all. And there are so many just lessons and principles that he shared that I will in, take forward in ten seconds. I mean. The difference between hearing a person speak on the stage and then that closed door interaction what is the difference i think the difference and th- that one thing he noted was just having the humility to just keep quiet and learn mm. um, especially because these are people who have learned lessons that took them years to acquire so even an hour with them can impart so much um into your life did you write notes of course <laughs> right so take us away on your, your, your game changer segment so if I asked you today who made the number one song in the world right now, you'd probably guess a global superstar like Beyonce, Ed Sheeran, or Shatawale. You would be wrong. The song in question, Old Town Road, was actually recorded in the closet of an unemployed teenage college dropout named Lil Nas X. Um, now, while the song catapulted him into the limelight, the song's viral popularity was no accident. Put simply, Lil Nas X is a social media marketing genius. The man who described the internet as his parent leveraged the power of non-traditional marketing to promote the song. Instead of spending thousands of dollars to promote a single, Lil Nas X uploaded it to the video platform TikTok for free. Now users of the app, which usually involves them making short clips set to music, quickly adopted the song as the background to the viral Yeehaw challenge. Now, a cursory search for the challenge on TikTok shows thousands of videos with almost 70 million plays. Now, this massive exposure landed the song on the top 20 of the Billboard charts. This week, our game changer is Momentum. Now, shortly after Old Town Road started to climb the country music charts, it was removed, ostensibly for not being country enough. Now, Lil Nas X capitalized on the buzz because everyone was talking about why it was actually removed. And he capitalized on that buzz to get a country music icon, Billy Ray Cyrus, to remix the song. 
Now, the remix was such a smash hit that it took the song from top 20 to the very top of the Billboard charts. And now it's one thing getting to the top and it's another thing staying there. To maintain the momentum at the top of the charts, Lil Nas X uses massive Twitter following to turn the song into a meme. Now, he did this by releasing remixes of the song with artists of significant cultural cachet. So you're talking about Diplo, Young Thug, etc. Now, while each of these remixes, you know, boosted the song and kept people interested in it, none of them had as much strategic impact as his remix with RM. Now, RM is a member of BTS and it's a Korean pop band. And they have a massive social media following. They actually hold the Twitter record, eh, the Guinness Book of Records, for the most Twitter engagements. Um, so their ultra committed fans actually streamed the song so much that in three days it amassed over 400 million streams on um, Spotify. Now, just to put this in context, the original song, after being out for months, has amassed 500 million streams. So that just gives you an idea of how intense these people's fans are. And now that streaming boost actually helped Lil Nas to break uh, Mariah Carey's 20-year-old record for the longest standing number one on the Billboard chart. So it just shows us that momentum is critical to building success. And to close, I would like to leave you with a quote from Susie Kasim. When you find yourself pursuing a goal or a dream, stop only to rest. Momentum builds success. This week, let's build momentum as we work through towards our dreams. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okran. Have a phenomenal week. Thank you, thank you very much. You, you got me worried at a point because you had mentioned seven artists and I didn't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was only when you mentioned Maria Carey that I got a bit comforted. I was getting very desperate. <laughs> so I, I didn't know any of the ones you mentioned. Talking about momentum, I mean, just when it gets very interesting, it's time to sign off. We have a minute and a half to go. So let me give you one minute out of it. Abba, um, what is your closing thoughts as we discuss entrepreneurship, we discuss money, we discuss the future and your own contribution? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now okay so i mean being here it's it's a great opportunity for me i've learned a lot from jifa <laughs> i've learned so much from her about cash flow and other things um for me um being an entrepreneur like i always say doesn't just make you a great leader but trying to impact on your generation as well starting a business is difficult but whether you try it or not and fail, the world must know you were here. Right. So you have to start something. Yes. In 10 years. Okay, so I have five years. In five years, <laughs> before you think about it. So in five years, my team and I look forward to have um, other branches in Tema and other places. Because we have loads, loads, loads of calls from around the, uh, I mean, other regions. But... For me, I have to get a good foundation. That's where I started first. Once we get that, then we move forward. But find us. We are Sadenta. So anytime you come around, so, you find so, us at Sadenta. So, Ketsi of my boss, Kwesi Chum, who owns the stuff. <laughs> I'm, giving you, I'm giving you 15 seconds to give us a contact okay. free, free for people to find hey. your business. 15 minutes, guys. So, 15 please seconds. pick your number. Let's drop this number first before we add the rest. Kindly dial 020-220-6121. 020 And call us. We deliver foodstuff, fresh and healthy foodstuffs to your homes. Shall we do we? special made foodstuff hampers. It's not your usual hamper. <laughs> Once you order for them, we deliver to you in your office, in your homes, and yes, foodstuff home, shopping. Shall oh, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you know the interesting thing? When, when it got to the free marketing, you see how her face lit up. Yes. I can't believe this. I wouldn't have seen it. All right. So the, the discussion, the discussion uh, on a work with Jesus tonight is about divorce. To allow or not to allow in the church. And we have Bishop Fred Crunchyman of, of the Transformation Assembly, who's a psychologist. And then Enimwa, my sister Enimwa, Enimwa, who's a divorcee. Help us with perspectives. And Pastor Ransford will be in the hot seat. I'll be listening to that one. Not because I want to have a divorce, but to learn from others and also to improve as a minister. Jifa Anyanso, as for you, you are a home base. <laughs> as I say, you are a home base. Jifa so you'll has be back. To add her time to mine. Though. You see. <laughs> so I want to say a big thank you to both you, both of you. It's time now for work with Jesus. So a big thank you to you for coming and we look forward to seeing you again. Next week we'll continue the segment and break up one more M. But until then, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good night.
many of us stand the chance of becoming victims of globalization? Not the shakers and the movers. That a great man was asked, how do you bring up children? And he said, the first is by example, the second by example.